I need to talk about, but when I kind of get in front of a group of people, I basically just talk about whatever I want to. And, uh, sometimes, in some ways, give kind of the same same message because I, I feel like I see the same issues kind of everything that I'm involved in, whether it's my church or the community or government or business. It's kind of the same same issues that I'm seeing repeatedly. Uh, in, in thinking about how I wanted to start this. One of the things that drives me nuts is when a speaker gets up in front of everybody and acts like everybody knows who he is. Um, but then also it drives me crazy when somebody gets up in front of a group and just talks about themselves. So I'm going to try to kind of cut that right down the middle. Um, so my name is Raleigh Hawk. I'm not originally from uh, Union County. I grew up in Williamson County, in a little town called Cranville that does not have a post office. So a lot of people that even live in Williamson County don't realize it's there because you don't get any mail from Cranville. Just card it. Uh, when I met my wife, well, I met her before she was my wife, but when I met her, <laughs> she was from down here, so uh, I am a transplant as a result, and it really found that I, I love the area, and, and it just kind of clicks with me in, in a way I didn't expect. Uh, to describe what I do for a living is uh, sometimes complicated. I, I'm often described as wearing a lot of hats. Um, I don't know exactly what it is I do. Supposedly, I'm an IT consultant, uh, but what I end up doing when I'm involved with a client, it kind of goes beyond that, where there's always, do I describe it, other things that need to be done and not necessarily anybody there to do it. So I end up being that person frequently. Uh, another reason why it's tough to describe what I do is that it's kind of a running joke, but it, it is the truth. I did not have a real job until a few months ago. Uh, just kind of had a, I did have a part-time job, started a year ago. But other than that, I've just been running my business for the last 10 or 12 years, basically since my daughter's, daughter was born. And uh, so kind of living this different lifestyle that a lot of people live where, you know, I had to worry about paying for my own insurance and all these things. And so kind of, kind of felt like a nomad. But uh, in the last few months, Union County was my biggest client. They decided to make me a full-time employee. So now I'm, I've been their chief information officer for a few years, but now I'm an actual W-2 employee and all that. Uh, still got the part-time job and still maintain a few clients, uh, but not, not really looking for too much more right now because I'm at that point where I can't really do much more and I don't really want to hire anybody. So it's going to be uh, kind of where I'm at right now. So as I mentioned, I see the same problems kind of at, at all, all areas of, uh, of our community where um, some of it is just typical of kind of a, a small rural community. Uh, some of it I think is unique to us in our area. Um, one thing is we have kind of this question about our identity, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But what I'm a firm believer in is kind of owning whatever you are. And if there are issues of being a small rural community, own that and find ways to turn it to your advantage. And just to give an example of how you can do that in the business world, here's what worked for me. That when when circumstances kind of aligned where I needed to start my own business and, and doing what I was doing wasn't working and was uh, eating up all my time, but also keeping me from, from actually making uh, any money because it was so expensive to, I was teaching at the time and teaching in Metropolis, so that was just really expensive to travel. I had people bugging me all the time about wanting to work on their computers and that sort of thing. And so even when I was applying for teaching jobs, it was more they were interested, well, could you work on computers a few hours a day? And, and avoided that because I've seen that happen too many times where you work a couple hours a day on computers, then it's half your day, and then all of a sudden you're not teaching anymore at all. And that wasn't what I wanted to do, to do at the time. Um, but once I decided, you know what, I need to give this a shot because just working a few hours a week as a consultant, I can, I can clear more than, uh, than I'm making in uh, teaching the way I was doing it. So I figured out a few ways that I knew I could be successful. Now, it was going to take time. But the reason I knew I could be successful at this were a few things. It was just advantages to me and where I was living. Part of it was that we've all had this experience where people in kind of a technical field will, will talk down to you, make you feel bad, make you, you know, kind of bully you sometimes. I knew I could not do that. So that was going to be an advantage. Another advantage was, and this, is, this applies to a lot of businesses in this area, I can live in Union County for a lot cheaper than I can in Jackson County and Cape Girardeau in Williamson County. And so because of that, I can immediately undercut all my competition. So just because you're small and just because you're, you're here in the middle of a rural area 
doesn't mean that you can't use that to your advantage. Um, the other thing was that in addition to charging more per hour, because they have to, the, the, my competition coming from these other areas, uh, I, I'm more centralized, so I can I can hit all the locations within the county and get to them pretty quickly. But then if somebody needs me to uh, show up in Williamson County or, or some of the uh, other counties on the eastern side of the state where I've done a lot of work, I could also get there quicker than a lot of the big city uh, outfits. And so I was able to get there quicker and cheaper. And uh, plus, uh, let's face it, I was a little hungrier than they were because I was new to this and knew I had to build it up. Problem was, and why I knew it was going to take a lot of time, is that everything still operates on word of mouth around here. Now, that's charming, and that's who we are, but it makes it diff difficult to kind of you know, crack into, into the business world here, where now, um, because of a lot of things I'm involved with, and partly because I have kind of a strange name, a lot of people know who I am, that, that I don't necessarily know who they are, um, but that's taken time to establish. And so now I'm to that point where my business has been one of these ones that's kind of, in a sense, failed for its own success because now all of a sudden I've turned it into two jobs instead of just the business. Um, but I, I am at the point where I'm at capacity for what I'm, what I'm able to do and I'm doing the things that I want to do and there's a lot of variety to it and so I really enjoy it. So in, in my heart it's a success story. <coughs> So back to why we have some of the issues that we're having right now, and some of you have heard me talk about this before in, in other scenarios. We have a leadership void, and I don't think this is unique to our county, but it is unique to our region, I believe. And as an example of why there's that leadership void, uh, I have something to show you. But first, before that, um, I mentioned growing up in, in Craneville. One of my experiences there was seeing these people who are just involved in everything. That they're, they're coaching, they're in business organizations, they're in businesses, they're on boards, all this stuff. Those people drove me crazy. Why you gotta be involved in everything? But then now, mid 30s, closing in on 40 pretty quick, I see that I am one of those people, didn't wanna be, but somebody has to step up and do these things. And so now I have a lot more sympathy for those of you that I was growing up around and those of you here now who, who have this issue where you're involved in so many more things than you necessarily want to be involved in. But somebody has to do it. Somebody has, has to keep things rolling. So what I wanted to show you, um, how many of you know that there's an election in a few weeks? Okay. It's not necessarily a well-known thing. And, it's uh, called a consolidated election, so it's a lot of school boards and, and uh, municipal government and that sort of thing. But it, it's not on a lot of uh, people's radar. Well, what I wanted to show you was, this is the sample ballot that I posted on the county website the other day. So this being a publication ballot, it's got everything on here. So if you actually go in to vote, you, you won't see most of this, just depending on, uh, on where, you're, where you're voting. But, here we've got for the city of Jonesboro, and, and if any of these folks are here, this isn't a shot at individuals, it's just the fact that we've got here, vote for mayor, pick one, uh, city clerk, pick one, right. treasurer, pick one, uh, for board one, pick one, board two, pick one, board three, pick one. And this is all through here. You've got a couple places where there are school boards where you're supposed to pick three, and you have four, so that's pretty awesome, right? Um, those of you who follow me on Facebook may have seen where I, I took a picture of this gas pump in uh, Carbondale the other day, and my wife's like, what are you doing now? And I'm pretty sure I'm breaking some sort of law by having a cell phone next to a gas pump and all that. I'm not supposed to do that because it could blow up. There are two pumps. 87 and 87. And I said, this is like voting in Union County. <laughs> That's right. So I, I've been railing about this for years, but uh, just this whole ballot is, is just like this all the way through. And again, it's it's not that these aren't good people and they may be great at what they do, but is this is this the limit of our vision? That we've got people wanting to run government, but just barely enough. And frankly, we're, we're short. There's a few things on there that... Um, that don't have anybody listed. 
Stenson Library. It has two writing slots. There's no candidates. So I presume at least one people, one person showed up and got registered as a write-in. <laughs> but this this is this is sad. And the conclusion that I come to with a lot of this <laughs> is that yeah, there there are some people that are just born to be politicians and to fill these slots. But the leadership that we need is going to have to come out of our business community. There's just no way around that. And we tend to be kind of the last people that are interested in being involved in government. As we're, we're busy living our lives, running our businesses, trying to stay out of people's business, and I assume it's okay to make money still. But we're going to have to start doing things to start filling those slots and filling slots of things that aren't involved in government, things that we're not necessarily comfortable doing because, again, we want to leave people alone, we want to live our lives, we want to run our businesses. Um, but if we, if we don't step up and fill those roles, and some of us, you know, busier than we want to be, we're going to keep getting the same problems. You know, if I, if I just landed here from Mars and I looked at this and saw they've only got one person running for each of these, these positions, I would think, wow, they must be really happy with the way everything is. Is everybody satisfied? No. Does anybody look at their county and get scared? Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at a community that I've fallen in love with over the last uh, 15 years or so, and I'm worried that we're going to lose it. And so I hope that, that other people have enough of that fear to, to kind of motivate them as well. But like I said, the, the, the leadership has to come out of the business community. If you see good things happening around here, it's basically from our business community. So one of the things that we need to do as a business community, because again, the leadership's going to have to come from there, we need to decide what is our identity. What do we want to be? And th this is a gospel I've been preaching for a couple of years now, and so if you've heard it before, I apologize, but it's still true. We've had, um, in economic development meetings, we've had this issue come up of, of, of the Shawnee, uh, Shawnee Bypass, is that what they were calling it? You know, and do we want this? Do we want this interstate to run next to our our community? Do we want it to run around our community? Do we want it to go right through? And so we have people trying to answer this question and say, well, what, what do people want? I don't even know how to answer that question because I don't know who we are and I don't know who we want to be. But again, that decision has got to be made among the people in this room because nobody else is going to hand it to us. Um, some people will say. Well, we need to be a bedroom community. And then some people think, well, that, that's just ridiculous. You're never going to survive that way. Um, other people think that we need to bring some sort, of, uh, some sort of new industry here. Maybe. I don't know. But I don't know how to tell you where to begin on where we want roads running and all of that until I have some idea who we plan to be. And so that may be a tough, a tough uh, decision to make, but we've got to work that out over time. So this may sting a little to, to think about it, but so often our focus when, when we're trying to, to save our community and keep things going, we're focusing on, uh, on prisons, on mental health facilities, on silly homes. These are all important things. And people are, people are going to be treated, they're going to be dealt with in these ways. You know, and some people need to be locked up somewhere. But if that's going to be the limit of our vision, First of all, those things can be moved anytime, and we don't have much control over it. We don't have the votes to, to make that not happen. We don't have the money to make that not happen. So it's out of our control. The other thing is, if you don't like being trapped, connected to the whims of Springfield and Chicago, you got to find other things, because those things will always be under the thumb of whoever's running our state. And so it's always going to be an issue. It's not going away. Now that's, that's a hard thing to say to people because we've got so many people whose lives are wrapped up in, in these kinds of operations. But we have to expand our vision beyond that. We've had some successes to build on the last few years, and I mentioned a lot of this comes out of our business community. The, the uh, Locally First program started in the, uh, the women in business. Okay. This has made people very aware of the kinds of issues that I'm talking about. That all of a sudden we're looking inward and we know that there are things here that we have to have to be able to tackle. That we have to figure out a way to keep our money here, to bring other money here. Because if we don't do that, we're not going to be able to keep up. And working in government, one of the things that, that we know is that we've got this issue of... Okay. 
we've got this issue of, um, of expenses increasing. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I, I saw a, a very interesting video from a Marion City Council meeting the other day. Uh, if you have not seen that, I highly recommend it. But where they're, they're discussing this very issue, where expenses are outpacing revenue. And so very often the limit of our thinking is, well, uh, we've got to find ways to, to raise property taxes. Well, we've got uh, this... this uh, may not have that already. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've we've uh, been able to stop that growing too much because of before I was around where we uh, passed PTEL in the county. And so you're very limited in how much you can raise taxes every year. But again, our, our vision is very limited. Our property taxes are by definition going to affect our own citizens. Why, why would we want to tap that as our primary revenue source? So again, as a business community, we need to find ways to start tapping into sales tax. Bring in more people here. You know, keeping the, keeping the money here that we're already spending is, is a start. We need to find ways to draw people in. Uh, so we learned all that from Locally First. And uh, as, as Darren, our, our county treasurer, has pointed out, we've seen an uptick in uh, our sales tax revenue since this has happened. So we can't draw a one-to-one -one correspondence there, but definitely this was an effective program. We've also got the CEO program that uh, I was involved with for a few years. Um, got our uh, second full class going with that and this is something where again we're starting to to build these leaders one of the reasons that I wanted to get involved with that was when I first saw a present presentation on it I realized this is one of those missing pieces this is where we don't have the leaders we need so we've got no option but to start growing them and so the CEO <laughs> program does that and again it's, it's through entrepreneurship so once again our business community is going to have to save the day here now we've still got some areas that we need to work on, definitely. Um, one of the things that, that I've learned about in the last few years, I wasn't familiar with this before, but that we have kind of this Appalachian tradition where some of us migrated from these areas. And so we have a tendency to kind of say, I'll, I'll stay on my hill and you stay on your hill and we're fine. And we'll, we'll come together and talk about a few things, but you know, we're, we're going to stay to ourselves. And I'm, I'm kind of a state of myself kind of guy. I don't, I don't like getting in other people's business. But what I've, what I've found is, and what I've had to convince myself of, is that everybody else's business is going to get into my business if I just stay on my, on my hill. So we've, we've got to work together. And we've got to break down these barriers. And we've got to form kind of a team here in the business community. Uh, another thing we need to do is we, we need to start finding ways that we define success. In addition to, to defining our identity, figuring out who we are, we've got to find things that we want to define as success, and we've got to find ways to achieve them. This again is, this was uh, something I recently learned, but this is part of the same kind of Appalachian attitude that we're uh, spending time together and talking and all this, that feels like doing stuff. It may feel good, but we're not necessarily accomplishing anything. We need definable goals, and we need to find ways to pursue them. <coughs> so, why do we have this issue with the retail linkage that locally first and the women in business and those of us that have been involved in that are trying to, to tackle? Why does that happen at all? Now part of my theory is it's a media issue because of our small community that we've got a disadvantage that if, if my wife and I have a free night, very hypothetical, this doesn't happen, but if we had a free night and we wanted to go do something just spur of the moment, how do I find out what's going on? Maybe Facebook, but they play with their algorithms and they do whatever. Um, I'm probably gonna, gonna turn on the TV or the radio, grab a newspaper. We're immediately at a disadvantage in those areas. We have a weekly paper, we've got a radio station, we don't have a TV station. So everybody who's interested in what's going on is getting bombarded with these messages from all these other communities that are surrounding us. We've got to find ways to separate them from their money instead of them separating us from ours. So this is where we've got to find ways to, to use our, our smallness, our, our rural communities to our advantage. Now amongst ourselves, we're already starting to do that because people are making conscious efforts to spend their money here. Uh, when, when locally first started, I didn't know how that would take off, but I, I still see signs all over the place. I still hear people say, locally first. It caught on. It succeeded. And so 
we need to find ways to, to expand beyond that. Now, I don't know if the answer is we need more, we need more radio stations, we need you know, five daily papers. I, I don't know about all that, but we need to find ways to compete. I've said for the uh, last couple of years, there's all these great things happening in Union County every night of the week. But we just don't know where they are. Again, I can go on Facebook, find that, you know, and then maybe, maybe something's uh, in the Gazette or, or on the radio, but it's hard to find out what's happening. It's just like when I started my business and I knew I could be successful because I could be smaller, I could get by on less, but I had that issue of everything is word of mouth still. So it's the same thing here. If I need a plumber, if I need an electrician, I need somebody to tell me who to find. Because otherwise, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see a big billboard when I'm driving to, to Carbondale or something. I'm, I'm going to uh, hear something on the radio, listening to CIL or whatever people listen to. So we've got to find ways to get around that. Because word of mouth isn't getting it done. Now, among our, our business community, I, I don't know if any of you are Game of Thrones fans. A lot of people are closet Game of Thrones fans. And don't want to just, who, who would watch that kind of, of raunchiness? Um, but there, there was a scene from uh, the first season of that where uh, the, the king asked, what's greater, five or one? And so he gives the example. You've got five and you've got one. One is stronger. And so tonight, having this, this opportunity where multiple business organizations are getting together and saying, you know what, we're going to all push the same direction. That, that gives me a lot of hope. And I think that's part of the answer here, that we're, we're all kind of going in different directions. We're each on our individual organization's mountaintop or our individual business's mountaintop. And maybe we're happy up there. And maybe we're doing OK. But we've got to do things to, to make this better for our uh, kids and our grandkids. So there's kind of three, three phases in my mind for, uh, for what we need to do to solve this. And again, locally first has kind of, kind of gotten that ball rolling. That we need people thinking locally. And that, that's happening, so that, that's good. Um, secondly, we need to find ways to shout out who we are and what we're doing here locally. And that's what I've been kind of working on something that, that's kind of a, a simple idea, but maybe something we can get behind and, and help to do that even more. But then third, and this is where we're going to have to decide as a business community how we're going to do this, we need to find ways to start reaching people outside of our county. We need to get them loading up their, their money, going to the ATM, and saying, I'm driving down to Union County tonight because this, 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 and this is going on. Whether that's wineries, whether that's bed and breakfast, you know, whether that's uh, open mic night at Kiki's, whatever it is, we've, we've got to find ways to tell people there's big stuff happening here. And it's a lot of fun. And you know what? You can, you can have fun a lot cheaper down here than you can uh, in some of these uh, bigger cities where you're coming from. So one of the ways that I've thought of, and I've been kicking this idea around in my head for, for a few years, is uh, how, can, how can we tackle this issue of people knowing who is here and what is going on? And so I've had in the back of my mind this idea for some sort of website that could start out as something simple, but then maybe expand to something bigger. And where this, this really uh, came to a point was when Charlie came to me one day and was, was asking me about this electronic business card idea that somebody was trying to sell her on. And it was, it was just somebody reselling something. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't necessarily an original idea. It wasn't even something that, that he'd come up with. But it was, hey, this big company created some sort of website that all you've got to do is plug in some information, and you've got a web page of some sort. This is something where a lot of businesses still struggle with, where uh, for some of us, there's not much of a barrier to entry to, to start a website, but for other people, that's incredibly intimidating. There's still a lot of people who don't use email or don't check it frequently. That Not everybody's as tech savvy as everybody else. So having the ability to do that is really nice. Uh, but I, I've also had this issue of where I don't know where to find the services that I need. 
and I don't know who's reputable, who does great work, but I really sincerely want to keep my money here. So my idea was to come up with a website, and if you want to pull it up on your phones, it's UnionCountyPulse.com, <coughs> Union County, and then Pulse uh, spelled out dot com. That it's it's very simple right now. But what I want to start with is, as a beginning phase is just a, a, a digital registry of our businesses where it's as simple as you, you enter your business name, you enter a description, if you enter a phone number, somebody goes to that page on their phone, they can just click it and call you immediately. They don't even have to type in the numbers. You put your email address, they click it on their phone, it goes right to email. And so then you can also upload your logo so it looks nice. Uh, you can upload another stream of photos if you want to scroll across the screen. Uh, but on that page, we're going to be able to break it down by business category. So if somebody needs a particular service, you need an electrician, you click on that, browse through, look at ratings. Uh, and so hopefully make this something where everybody here locally is able to keep that money here locally. And, and as we were uh, trying to, to come up with a list of people to invite and all this, I mean, it really hit me how... How many times have we been trying to come up with these lists of people, you know, in the business community, what they're doing? And so, if nothing else, we, we can we can solve that issue. But it, it demonstrates the fact that, that we don't we don't always have this comprehensive list. Each of our business organizations has a different list, and uh, different people are members of it. But what we want to do is kind of start out tonight. That everybody who's here, you can sign right up for that. We want uh, people who are members of these business organizations to be able to sign up for that, so that we can start working together and be that one that's kind of pushing things forward here. So with the, the rest of our time tonight, in addition to, to mingling and, and spending money and everything, uh, we, we'd like for you to sign up for that. And if you've got a, a business logo on your phone, or if you've got a website, you can pull it from there. Uh, my wife has a computer. I believe Bonnie has a computer here, too. So if, if, you, if you aren't comfortable with doing that on your phone, you can do that on uh, their laptop. And just sign up for it, and then it'll it'll send you an account in your email. Free. Yes, and it's free. <laughs> one one of the uh, one of the issues that I've had with my business, part of what I do is also web hosting. Um, I've done some website design, but I don't really feel qualified to call myself a web designer. They're, they're, those folks are a little more artistic than I am. Um, but one of the things you benefit from is I I have never figured out a way to make money with websites, so uh, I, I'm giving a lot of them away. Um, I, I host the, uh, uh, well, the old CEO website, uh, host the uh, Locally First website, Women in Business website, and Economic Development website. I uh, haven't, haven't quite gotten the, uh, the chamber yet, but maybe someday. Uh, but this is something that I offer to the community, and this, this is another one of those tools that I want us to be able to, to make our community not only survive, but thrive. And I think this is uh, one of those steps in doing that. So, as we mingle the rest of the evening, uh, I'd like you to try to try to sign up for that. And um, if you don't have a logo, you can always go back and add it later. Once you have an account, you can log in and add things every time. And that's kind of the beginning of this. But where this this could be bigger is, I can see this eventually becoming some kind of app where we publish events on that. And so if you have that app on your phone, you get notified. There's something big happening tonight because we know there is. We just don't know where it is. This is going to let you know about that. And it's going to be a way for as we build this for uh, businesses to get in touch with potential customers out there so that we don't just have to rely on word, word of mouth and that we can maybe have a tool that, that maybe even some of the communities around us don't have and eventually find ways to expand and, and pull them in. That's all I got. I, I appreciate you guys coming out tonight and letting me speak.